Hey everybody, I'm Adam. And I'm Gary with Brightingale. And today we're talking about LEA amplifiers. So who is LEA? LEA is a relative newcomer to the amplifier industry. Um, they were started by a bunch of Crown engineers from Crown Audio, a uh, big, huge company in, in professional amplifiers. And I'm not gonna lie, one thing that they brought along with them that I wish they hadn't. So you see this light right here? It's green right now. Hey, Tatiana, that light is green. Do you think this is on or off? On. Hey, Gary, is it on or off? Green means go. Green means go. Uh, no, that's not true. It's off right now. The same issue was present in the uh, JBL CSA amplifiers, also designed by Crown, and it really upset me. And we had a lot of customers calling us, is the amplifier on? Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, it's green. I'm it's like, oh, green. I'm, I'm sorry, customer. I know this is counterintuitive, but the light needs to be blue to show you that the amplifier is on. Anywho, we're not going to hold it against them because this is actually a really cool product <laughs> and a really cool product line. So what they have here is they've got a series of amplifiers. There's two channels, four channels, and eight channel amplifiers. And each of those amplifiers have what I think is the coolest feature, which is they call the smart bridge. So traditionally, when you have an amplifier, uh, maybe a four channel amplifier, and you bridge two channels together to get more power, what that means is both those two channels are consumed by that one speaker output. And so you have two channels left, effectively turning your four channel amplifier into a three channel amplifier. So LEA has a cool, cool thing that's called Smart Bridge. And so what it allows you to do is say, okay, well, let's say each one of these amplifier channels, and if this is a four channel amplifier, which this one's not, it's a two. Uh, if it was a four channel, then we each have 350 watts per channel. Well, maybe what we do is we bridge two channels together and get 700 watts. And as long as we don't exceed the total output of the amplifier, we still have all four channels available to us. So channel one could be you know, a 600 watt channel, and then we could have three 200 watt channels. This is hugely helpful in a situation where maybe you've got a hotel ballroom or something, and you've got one large space with a bunch of ceiling speakers, and then two small meeting spaces attached to it. In addition to having the two channel, the four channel, and the eight channel versions at different power levels, all those same amplifiers with Dante capability. When you add the Dante capability, what's very cool is the inputs aren't directly connected to the amplifier, but they can be used as Dante uh, on-ramps. So I could actually, if I wanted to, uh, plug in a wireless microphone outputting line level into the back of one of these amplifiers, even though I have no intention of ever routing it directly out of the amplifier. I want it going Dante back to my mixer. Basically, it's a two, four, or eight input uh, Dante interface onto your Dante network. And then you can then route audio back to your amplifier using the Dante network. The other cool thing about this is how you control it. So Gary, where's your laptop? Oh, I gotta go over here to get it. The password is one, two, three, four. <clears throat> All right. So Gary, there's actually a couple ways to connect to this. Yep. Say I've got a facility network. I can just plug in a network cable into this. I can plug my computer into the network. Connect just like that, good, no problem. Good to go, yeah, I think it's uh, DHCP uh, default. Yeah. Absolutely. I could also uh, plug in a uh, wireless router, join that uh, SSID, and can, can connect to it. The last way to connect to this, this actually has a wireless access point built into it. And I can actually right here, push this button, and that will actually turn on the access point inside the amplifier. And uh, if we wait a moment, it'll actually pop up as an available network once this light turns blue. And to know which network we need to connect to, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this around. All right, and on this little bitty screen, we can see what the wireless network is, which in this case is, it basically starts with a CS352. Oh, there we go, CS352. And once we're on the same network as the amplifier, we can just use a web browser to go to its interface, which is 192.168.1.1. Boom, check it out. There we go. We're in the browser, we see our very fancy amplifier here. It is uh, named device name, which I like a lot. Uh, so down here we've got um, the power button that brings up all of our looking at the power, the power supply, you know, or what's our line voltage, how much current's being pulled. Do we want to set it to auto standby and after how long? And next to it is a smiley face. Uh, that means that everything is good, but uh, if everything is not good, it will become a not smiley face. So smiley face means everything is good. Uh, we have our two outputs here. This is the two-channel amplifier. 
we can choose our uh, primary input to be input one, input two, or input one and two. And here we have our secondary input where we can also choose in one, in two, or input one and two. Uh, we can use that for a couple different things. We can either set that up to be uh, kind of a paging microphone sort of setup or paging input sort of setup, or it can also just be a redundant setup, right? You can set that up to say, hey, if your primary input uh, falls below a certain level and the secondary input is above that level, go ahead and just switch to the secondary input. And also available on all of those inputs is if this is the Dante version of the amplifier, your Dante inputs will be available. Yes. So over here on our settings, we can uh, name our outputs. Uh, we can change from high impedance or low impedance. Uh, there's our smart bridge uh, enable that Adam was talking about. And we can also lock out the back panel potentiometer. So basically, there's little volume knobs on the back. And if you don't want them to work, you check that box. Yeah, and then uh, people in there fiddling with stuff can't, uh, can't fiddle with that. And the other thing, if you don't know the difference between high impedance and low impedance, it, it, it's a, a, one of the other things that makes this amplifier very flexible. For the sakes of this video, think of it this way. A low impedance system, you can really only connect a couple speakers to it, but you get higher performance. A high impedance system, you can connect lots and lots and lots of speakers to it. And that can be really, really useful in certain situations. Back on the back, we've got a signal generator. Um, and that's pretty much what you got. Output signal, make sure you actually have a sp uh, signal coming out of the speakers. Then you've got some crossover settings. High pass, low pass. Uh, you actually have an EQ on each output channel. It is a, an eight band. We got our limiter set up. We can choose to have an RMS limiter or a peak limiter. And then there's the uh, load monitor. This is actually really cool uh, monitoring of how your speakers are doing as well. By turning this on, you, it'll sit there and measure the impedance. And if it says like, hey, we, it's something shorted, you've got too low of impedance, or hey, something is wide open, you got too high of impedance, it'll give you a little error here. And this is a good time to talk about one other feature of this. Is unlike other amplifiers, there's a lot of amplifiers on the market that will give you this information, but only if you are on the local network. LEA actually uses Amazon Web Services to cloud host this software. So you can actually monitor this from anywhere without needing to VPN into, your net, into the network that has these amplifiers on it. And that makes this very, very cool, where you can remotely monitor the status of your amplifiers wherever you are. That's very fancy. That's fancy. Yeah. I wish I was that fancy. Well done, LEA. <laughs> we will forgive the green light fiasco. Another nice thing is that LEA provides a lot of speaker tunings. So let's be honest, this is very flexible. And with a lot of flexibility comes a lot of options. With a lot of options comes a lot of configuration. So say, for example, I've got this specific speaker that I've always used, and I've always used with that manufacturer's amplifiers, and there's just a preset, and I load it. LEA is taking care of that. They'll say, hey, here's a whole bunch of presets for common speakers. And you can just load them up here. It'll take care of all the EQ presets. It'll take care of all the limiting, the peak limiting, the RMS limiting, the power limiting. Um, and you just load it up and you're done. And they also have a really great tool on their website that allows you to calculate limiting if they have a speaker, if you have a speaker that's not in their library. You can just use their online calculator. You can even download it as an Excel file um, and just take care of it and then just enter in the values and you are good to go. Um, so they're trying to make this as easy as possible, as flexible as possible, and I think that's really, really cool. So if you have any questions about LEA amplifiers, if they're right for you or if something else is, give us a call, leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.